Omega here and welcome back to my channel. I've got a massive smile on today because we are talking about my favourite subject in all of comic books. It's LGBTQIA plus comics. Yes, this has taken me a long time to make and it's not because I didn't want to, it's because there are too many and I literally put 10 on this list and had to just stop because it would have been the longest video ever. There are so many comics to choose from nowadays in the community. I myself am a bisexual person. I love reading about characters like me and also characters about people in my community. It gives me strength. It makes me see representation, which I never see. And it makes me have great conversations with other people. There are so many comics to choose from now. So much so that I have a table at work that I call the Gable. It's our LGBTQIA plus section and I work on it every week. I find more and more stories to add and it makes me super, super happy. However, as good as that is, a lot of these comics, if they're not Marvel DC, tend to go out of print real quick and they don't do a lot of printings for them. So some of them you're going to have to read online and let's try and get behind them more so they make more printings and make these books even more popular. Do you know Hardstopper, which I don't mention this video because everyone's talked about Hardstopper, isn't even really in print at the moment and it's got a Netflix series. That is so ridiculous. So let's try and see more printings for these books out there among the world. Uh, but yeah, I've chosen a bunch of comics from across the community, some gay, lesbian, bisexual, polyamorous, all kinds of genders and identities. So there's a little bit for everyone, hopefully. And if not, come and visit me at work, look at the wonderful Gable and we'll help you find something to read. Because it's my favorite thing in the whole world to do. So let's talk LGBTQIA plus comic. We're starting this video off with a bang with one of the greatest LGBTQIA plus comics, My Brother's Husband by Gengora Tagami. There are two volumes of this and also a live action series, which I have not watched, which I might do today now that I've mentioned it out loud. Uh, this comic is really important because it's not just about a gay relationship, people discovering that they're gay, something like that, you know, the same stories we see over and over again, but it's literally about the involvement of a family and having discussions about homosexuality in Japan, which, I mean, I've never seen that discussed in a comic before. So this is set in Tokyo, and it features a character named Yachi and his daughter Kana. They live in Tokyo, they have a wonderful home life, uh, things are going, you know, smooth, and then all of a sudden, a guy named Mike from Canada, knock, 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 knocks on the door, and he announces that he is the late husband of Yachi's deceased brother, Ryoji a lot to take in. He is aware that his brother was gay and that he moved overseas and lived a whole separate life but they fell apart and after his passing Mike has decided to go to Japan to discover some of his late husband's culture and meet his family and get to know that side of him a bit better. He's also grieving along with his brother Yachi and together him and Mike form this amazing bond but before that happens they have some amazing conversations. A lot of it is thanks to the daughter, Kana, who just asks the most blunt questions, which I absolutely love. It's that kid in them, that uh, unfiltered nature, which makes this comic so amazing, and shows these panels where Yachi is having trouble mentally with a conversation and shows his thoughts of what he would actually like to say, but then verbalizes the polite version of what he wants to say because he's too nervous to reflect how he is feeling. He's nervous about this relationship, how it makes him feel as being a Japanese man in that society. It's just brilliantly written and has some really deep conversations about grief, about homosexuality, about family. And I just can't get enough of little Kana asking her very innocent questions, announcing, wow, two men can get married. This is amazing. Why don't we have this in Japan? It's just a great comic. So if you want something really, really heartfelt, that's really a great conversation and not just light and fluffy, though it does have those beautiful moments. This is a great, great comic. Now let's talk about a great bisexual polyamorous comic called Sugar Town by Hazel Newland. My only complaint about this comic is that it's teeny tiny and it felt like a single issue and I have been waiting years and years and years to read a follow-up comic and it just hasn't happened. So outside of that, this comic is absolutely beautiful and Perhaps the only bisexual polyamorous relationship that I've read in comics. I'm sure in Saga there would be some. You'd read some perhaps in... What's that spicy comic? Not swing. Sunstone. That's bisexual polyamorous, I, I would believe as well. But this 
was a very sweet comic. It shows a relationship of a young woman named Hazel and her partner Gregory. Things are going really well. They're really open with their relationship. They discuss everything and they're having a fun, playful time. They also have some really great in-depth conversations. And one of them is that they decide that Hazel wants to go out and meet a new partner, have some fun on the town. And so that night they head to a cool club, they're super nervous about what they're wearing, just like everybody else when they go to a club, trying to look cool, and then in walks Argent. This beauty uh, dominatrix, look at that dress, that blue dress, amazing, walks in and into her life and they begin a sweet relationship and having really open discussions about I'd love to meet your partner, what do they look like, who's Gregory? It's fantastic and really great to see this really open polyamorous relationship. <laughs> Highly recommend it. You can't get it in print anymore, but if you head to their website, you can check it out, Sugar Town. Now this wouldn't be an LGBTQIA plus comic book video if I didn't mention my amazing friend Savannah's comic Bloom that they made with their friend Kevin Panetta on writing. It is a beautiful love story between two young gay men. Ari is living in a small town working at his family's bakery. Bakery's not doing too well so he's forced to kind of stay there and help he feels committed to doing that, doesn't want to do it, wants to move to the big city with his friends, do his band, make his band really big. Uh, and he's really kind of sad about having to stay at the bakery and working, working, working. He doesn't got a passion for food or baking or anything. That is, until he meets Hector, the new employee. Look at this handsome young man. Uh, and he instills that passion for baking in Ari and also a passion for Hector. <laughs> it is a stunning comic with beautiful illustrations of baking food and patisserie making, which I love because my husband makes patisserie. He's a patisserie baker. So it's just a stunning book to read and also a really sweet romance comic with two young gay men that make out on an oven. I'll leave you to discover that for yourself. <laughs> Bloom, first, second publishing. You're gonna love it if you love uh, sweet romance books and also cooking. It's a great combination. If you're after some really great transgender representation, then I would suggest Boys Run the Riot by Kato Gaku. This is a great manga. I could not put it down, borrowed it off my friend Elena and didn't want to give her back. Uh, there's four volumes out, number five is out soon and it tells a story of about a young transgender male named Rayo who's going to school, going about their business, feeling that they are a male now and wanting to slowly represent that in their fashion. So outside of school they're wearing really cool street fashion and they've really found they have a passion for it, for wearing cool street hip-hop clothing. So one day they're walking around the cool street district wearing their cool fashion feeling really good about themselves when they run into possibly the worst person you could run into like the school bully named Jin. Turns out they're not really a bully people have just got the wrong idea about them and that Jin and Rio are meant to be friends they both have that passion for fashion and decide they're gonna start a clothing label with some really great branding and sayings on it, super positive, and it's just wonderful. It's really cool to see this young relationship form. Uh, it's really great to see transgender people represented in comics, which is quite rare at the moment. It needs to be more, and it's just a really great comic. So highly recommend it. Boys run the riot. Now it's time to talk about one of my absolute favorite comics. It's Lovable Oaf by Ed Lucy. Look at this amazing cover with the oaf on the cover, but the inside is all chest hair. What's not to like about a lot of chest hair? This comic's all about Oaf and his life. Oaf used to be a professional wrestler known as Goat Blood. Very, very furry. This is the costume he used to wear. He's quite beloved in the wrestling scene. He's also really into metal music. In particular, at the moment, I have to check the notes. It's a disco grindcore band named which I most likely had to blip out then. You'll have to read the comic to find out the band name. And he is in love with the lead singer Eiffel and they're going on dates, they're going to bands, and Eiffel is such an angry, angry man in, in his character when he's singing and when he's just being himself. So angry. Uh, what else? Lovable Oaf has a lot of chest hair, as I mentioned, and actually shaves the chest hair off and makes little dolls and sells them at a store. Uh, what else does Lovable Oaf do? Oh, Lovable Oaf has a wonderful scent about them that attracts cats, right? So he attracts all these cats and started a cattery, a rehoming thing for cats. It's just such a bizarre, fun comic representing the bear subculture and just really bizarre. So if you like really indie comic books with weird kind of storylines and over the top characters, there's also some great references to indie comic creators like Jeffrey Brown, it's really good. Um, 
I really recommend it. It's a little bit different than everything else on the list. They seem a bit more mainstream, but this is a really odd, wonderful comic, which I love just so much. Now let's chat about what I believe to be the best representation of LGBTQIA+ in comics currently, and that's Lumberjanes. It ran for six years, had all these amazing spin-off books and novels, merch, had this amazing Lumberjanes shirt, which I'm too big for now, sadly. And it's all about a summer camp in America where a group of people are off in the woods wearing cute little hats, uh, and we meet the members of the, what do you call it, unit or group, Roanoke. Their names are Mal, Joe, April, Molly, and Ripley. And they all hang out in that cabin, having fun adventures, making friends. And the biggest thing that's important about this is that they never fight within themselves. They only fight evil, um, you know, like holy kittens and big dragons and things like that. It's really magical. Think of like Gravity Falls where battling mystic things that no one else seems to see. And it has really great representation. We have Joe who is transgender and has two dads. We have Barney who enters the series much later who identifies as they them and attends the the male group, the adjacent male group but decides they feel more comfortable with the Lumberjanes. And we have Mal and Molly who have been in a relationship for the entire comic series. It's just a great, great comic. It's really fun. It's all ages. I think it might be the only all ages comic. Yeah, maybe. I think you could probably read uh, Son of Superman. That would also be okay. But um, it's just a great all ages comic uh, focusing on friendship and accepting people for who they are. Now it's time for something frivolous and fun and lesbian and we're gonna read Heavy Vinyl. It is a wonderful comic sent in 1998 at a vinyl store called Vinyl Mayhem. I just love that concept. Let's just ruin that for a moment. At one point they were gonna make a TV series of it which would have been kind of like Stranger Things in the way that it brought retro 90s stuff back but didn't happen so I'm devastated. <laughs> but you should definitely check out the comic um, Heavy Vinyl. And it's all about Chris, who's just started working at a vinyl store, Vinyl Mayhem. They're a lesbian, and they're currently in love with their co-worker Maggie, who is a beautiful blonde person who's very kind to Chris and always giving them cool posters and music and stuff. And I don't know, it's just really retro and makes me think of like when he used to lend vinyl and CDs to people. Now you're just like, check out this on Spotify. But back then it was like a way to form a relationship with someone. And it's just, I don't know. It, I think it's because it's 90s and it's just that really fun boom comics, boom box, bright colourful palette with those, you know, cute character designs. It's just the delight. So if you want something light and lesbian, you can check out that. Oh, and you can check out Moonstruck as well from Image Comics. Segway. And <laughs> I don't have notes written for this, but Moonstruck is also really sweet. It's a romance comic between two lesbians and they live kind of in Saga Town where there's like different animals and like minotaurs and people all live in this world together with humans and everyone's comfortable with sexualities there. It's not, you know, current times. Everyone's just who they are and she works in a coffee shop and it's just really sweet and pastel-y coloured with sweet character designs. Well, it's sweet till they go to this like house party and there's like this evil snake dude, but I really recommend it if you want something sweet and lesbian to read. So let's talk about Marvel in DC. Yes, things are getting slowly better there. We've got Marvel Pride, DC Pride issues coming out, but how many of them actually have ongoing series? And I'm not talking about six issues, 12 issues, but actually ongoing series. Not a lot, but things are getting better thanks to great creators like Marika Tamaki, Tom Taylor, people pushing Marvel and DC to make these changes and notice that there is money because really that's all that's involved from Marvel and DC, money, 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 and trying to push them to see that there is an audience there that will pay money to read these amazing stories. So thank you so much to all those creators out there doing hard work, getting things in the mainstream media, and let's start with Young Avengers by Jamie McKelvey and Kieran Gillen. This is the team that went on to do uh, Wiccan Divine. Didn't love Wiccan Divine, but it's a really popular comic. <laughs> this comic's really great because it has a vast majority of characters in the LGBTQIA plus rainbow. <laughs> uh, we've got Wiccan and Hulkling who are already in an established relationship. None of this coming out business, they're already together. Uh, we have America Chavez in there. and We also have Nova that's just doing their own thing. Oh, so beautiful. I used to keep a picture of Nova in my wall that I cut out from the computer because I thought Nova was so beautiful there. Anyway, so this comic focuses on a accident, an incident, where Wiccan 
a does a spell to try and so Hawkins mother is in a situation perhaps they're gonna die Wiccan tries to save them but brings them back as a parasite and so it's all of them trying to fight Hulkling's mum but it's not really their mum it's a parasite it's a great story and I was really really involved I couldn't tell you how many times I've read that comic you get to see each character shine in their abilities and also showing their problems what they're having you know issues with it's just a great comic beautifully illustrated and just a great superhero comic so if you want some more superhero action rather than just relationships give Young Avengers a try. Now let's talk about Superman. Yes, the very embodiment of truth and good and love. And of course he's gay, it makes so much sense. And that is all thanks to the amazing team of Tom Taylor and John Timms bringing out Superman Son of Kal-El. Why didn't I pick this up in single issues? I don't know. I was silly, I was trying to save money and I really regret it, but I got it in hardcover just a few weeks ago and just could not put it down. What an amazing book. We are following Superman's son, John, as he tries to live up to his father's name. He's Superman, you know, it's a lot to live up to. And then all of a sudden Superman, he's left Earth. He's got other things to do. So that leaves John on Earth protecting the Earth while trying to go to college. It's a lot to take on. So first day of college, he decides to put on this weird blonde wig and looks like a weird reject from a 2000s you know, film and of course something horrible happens at school and it's revealed that he is Superman. But at that exact time he meets a really cool person named Jay. And not only does Jay support them, uh, super smart cookie, really cool friend, but they develop a relationship. So it's really really fun to see a mainstream character like Superman having a full page kiss with Jay. I can't believe that this got printed and it just fills me with so much joy that DC let this happen and said yes we're putting money behind this, we're backing this and no matter what kind of hate we get, this is it. This is the character and this is what we're showing. It means so much to so much of the community to see this in a DC comic. So well done everyone involved and the whole comic is just a great superhero book with a romance story behind it and every single issue seems to have a variant cover of the two Jay and um, John having kisses. It's delightful. <laughs> Highly recommend it again if you like superhero books and you also like really deep relationships. Things you know straight away they've got a lot of stuff to deal with with all this evil going on and also you know just starting a relationship. Brilliant comic book. So I'm gonna have to stop there because I'm losing my voice. I've been talking for 37 minutes because there's just too many great comics to talk about. These aren't my all-time fave, the best, the only LGBTQIA plus comics in the genre. You can tell me some of yours in the comments down below and we'll make a massive list that I'll put in the in the like description and I'll add to it so we can have a really great list for people to refer to. You can also come and visit me at All Star Comics Melbourne. We've got a really great gable which I worked on really hard and we keep adding to every single week as new stories come out and are discovered and people telling me about them. So that'll help me there as well so I can have more wonderful books for people to read. So thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so, so much. Happy Pride and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye. <laughs>